Hi, this is Lucius Boric from COG, drummer from COG, and may the rock be with you. But well, welcome to May the Rock Be With You. I think it's the first time I've spoken to anyone from COG, so this is awesome. Well, thanks for having me, Troy. No worries at all. Now, we are here because COG is heading back out on tour, which is amazing, and the vinyl tour. So we'll talk about the vinyl releases soon because that's very exciting. But can you give us an idea of what a COG show will look like in 2024 and how it will shape up? Yeah, it'll, uh, well, any, you know, it's, it's full of surprises. You know, anything can happen. It's, um, you know, we never know. It's kind of like you, you show up and you do your sound check and hopefully it's going to, it's all going to kind of work out all right. Um, but our show hasn't really necessarily changed, I would say. I think really, you know, just performing different songs, it, that also kind of makes us kind of, I guess, play slightly different to some degree you know so some songs that we played maybe a year ago uh different to ones we haven't played for three years mm. um yeah you're always trying to i guess as a a musician and because you're not you know all the time playing those songs like every weekend um somewhat it's it's kind of fresh to some degree even though we've done lots of shows over the years but um yeah i, th I think really just you know trying to pick the songs from the the two albums because it is just a vinyl tour so you know obviously we're not going to be playing any covers or maybe any of the new uh songs that we've released in the last or singles that we've released in the last you know past three years or so mm -hmm. um so i'll just be focused on those two albums so mm -hmm. um yeah we've got you know we've got um a young and up and coming lighting guy jai who's very enthusiastic and He's uh he's out there working and and um I saw I, I was working with him in a in a, another band for a bit and um he jumped on board with Cog so he's got you know some lighting surprises nice. which could be different to what we've had in the past you know because he's kind of let's just say young blood coming up you know hmm. excellent so in Cog terms when we're talking from the new the uh, two albums a uh, three song set is that what we're looking at for these shows. Say say that again. A three song I was just set. Making a joke. They're very long songs. I just think it's all. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Are you a father? No, <laughs> a I'm not. Dad, dad joke. <laughs> dad no, joke. but I have seen you guys. I should have got before. it. I should. I should have got it because I'm the father. <laughs> there you go. I've seen these guys, you guys live before, and one show that sticks out in my mind was when you did, I think it was the reunion shows at the Annandale. There was one show that just was oh. unbelievable many years ago. They're, your shows are really hard to put into words, and I find myself with Cog, I've been to a million shows, and you always just amaze me. Is there, is there a way you can describe your show in one word, and what would that be and why? Oh, wow, well, I've never had that question asked to me before. Hmm. Um, well, there's a couple of words that come up, but I guess passion would be the overwhelming word, hmm. the main one, um, because I think within passion you still – vulnerable to making mistakes you're still vulnerable to you know you're just you you encapsulated in the performance or the songs um in a way where it's it's for a lack of a better term spiritual or um not that that's a bad term at all but um yeah it's it's i think that yeah the passion and getting caught up because it, it can be kind of driving you in a way where it depends on what happened through the day or the week or maybe the month uh, although you're trying to, you know, just be focused on the songs and mm. and you're trying to be in the moment on stage for the people and, and you know, the other guys in the band. Uh, yeah. I think that, yeah, I, I think passion's probably the, the main one, I'd say. That's a great word for it because that's what it is. And you guys seem to pop mm. up here and there for shows and every time you hit the stage, is there a, man, we really need to do this more kind of thing which leads to why we're talking now? Yeah, it's a funny thing as you get older and, you know, as a as a band, as a, a group, a business, a, a brand, whatever you want to call it, um, you know, how that evolves and you've never done it before. So you, you, re you really are in new territory with the experience of how it plays out, given that it's a long time. Hmm. Um, yeah, so it's a it's a it's it's a funny one, that one, I, I think a funny one, that one. Yeah. Uh, what was the? I just I was thinking of something else. What was the main? No, I'm just question? saying. Like you seem to pop up, and then is it all of a sudden like, man, this is really good. Yeah. We should do this a lot more. 
Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry about that. I'm, sure. Last night was bad sleep. <laughs> Every twenty <laughs> minutes, I was waking up. I was thinking of paradiddles all the time. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. We it would be love. It would be really cool to play a lot more because I think, mm. given the music that we have too, um, to really be on on our game, you know, it's it's when you just do six shows and you haven't played for seven or eight months. You know, you, it, it's a it's a real challenge. You know, you, you you want to be somewhat spontaneous, which is great to have a break and not to always play. But you you also want to feel slightly comfortable, uh, and it would be nice to play a lot more. Um, but you know, there's there's things at hand there. We've all got other businesses. We've all got families. Um, trying to find the timing to make it work is is challenging. You know, given the seasons and what's going on with everything else that's going on. Um, you've really got to try and you know pick the moment and um, and when everyone's okay to do it, strike um, accordingly. So yeah. it's not like when we were younger. It was yeah, it was definitely more just like hey, let's just jump in the van and off we go every <laughs> weekend. It was like there was wasn't as much responsibility other than you know trying to get the 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 van or the truck to the to the gig yep. and show up and play. And so yeah, we we. Um, I think the intentions there. It'd be nice to put on more shows, and and to some degree too, it costs a lot of money to put shows on, and yeah, and um, you know, sometimes you got to you got to pull back a little bit to kind of like build up that that um that bank balance, so to speak, to be able to fund it a bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, that makes sense. Because we're in, we're an independent band, we're still independent. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Now I want to talk about the vinyl because it's a beautiful collection coming very soon. All these different variants and things, which look phenomenal. But also, your music is now yours. So, what is the feeling like now owning your music and having control of it after fifteen years? Yeah, to to finally do the vinyl was was great because we've been wanting to do that for a long time, and you know. It's like we, we were with a, a label that was kind of dysfunctional, or it got to a point where it really wasn't a functioning label. So we, but we were stuck in a contract. So, um, you know, we were, we also had a little bit of a break, as you know, back in the day. But um, yeah, it's been you know kind of sitting idle for quite quite some time, and it's been a um, you know a challenge to kind of like um, you know just wondering like well, we knew when the term was going to end and when it was going to finish. But it was kind of like, okay, well, now we've got our stuff. What do we, what do we do with it? How do we manage it? How do we put it out there? Um, which, which is a great feeling, you know, to, to own your masters back and and have it all kind of paid off, and and um, then you've got control and you can kind of do what you feel you need to do with it. Um, the vinyl was definitely a, a like a first uh, step because uh, I think really the tangible quality of vinyl and you know putting music into something that's tangible. Mm is is of interest to us it gives the music value more value than just say being on a playlist or you know in the cloud as they say you know what i mean um after you've worked you know really really hard to write those songs uh it's really you know it's really really nice to have them uh end up on a vinyl it's like yeah. it's almost like the whole and i grew i grew up with vinyl too you know we grew up with vinyl so it's a, there's a little bit of that romanticism of, yeah. of those times you know where you would have that relationship um with with the vinyl and and um you, you know you'd be a fan of the of the band or the music um but yeah if it you know after 15 years it, it feels good to finally have that back and i think it gives the band also somewhat um a clear path to kind of like um you know open the gates to possibly what might come in the future you know knowing mm -hmm. that we just you know, it's almost like you. It's almost like you're starting again, so to speak. You know, and you're not trapped in any contracts. You know, you kind of, yeah, you you you're at this other junction point, if you will. Beautiful. Have you had a chance to see the vinyl yet, or hold one, or are they out? No, not yet. They're they're in print at the moment, and nice. um, I think the test pressing is being listened to. So once the test pressing is approved. Um, then it'll go to print. I think you know they print up all of the artwork and everything, but the actual vinyl they've got to do the test pressing first, have a listen, uh, and then it, you know if it's if it's good to go. Um, hopefully, given us the vinyl tour, they've got to be ready yeah. by March. <laughs> That'd be nice. Now, what I love, though, been... what's that? You, what I love is you can only get them through my old mate and yours, Doug Bear at Rare Records. Like now, yeah. can you tell us about your relationship with Dougie and in the store? Sure. Yeah, sure. 
Um, well, Doug's always been a fan of of the band and always kind of used to show up, you know, years and years and years and years ago supporting the band. Mm. Um, so there's a history there, just you know, coming to shows and you know how you're going and being friends and stuff like that. And um, and he's all, he also loves some of the previous bands that that we were in as well, The Hanging Tree and another band I was in called Juice. So he's you know, because he's been such a big music fan, so he's always known, you know, for the last thirty odd years what's kind of been coming and going, so to speak. But um, yeah, we did the uh, when we had our uh, just visiting, um, which we've always owned the copyright of that. So we that was the first um, kind of vinyl test we did and run we did we did with Doug, and that was really successful. That was really good. Um, and we were just over the moon with how and, and the quality and how it came out was fantastic, you know. And for just visiting, for it to be you know, put on vinyl was was a real monument for you know monumental moment because that was uh, the way that was recorded. Um, it was it was self done. We we did it ourselves, and you know, it ending up on vinyl was just such a transition. Just to see the transition that I went through was just fantastic. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Doug was really great and he was very professional. Um, and he's got good, you know, a good insight into things all, all vinyl, obviously, because that's what he does. So he's, you know, quite specialist at that. So, um, yeah, we, you know, so far so good. Mm. Looking forward to it coming out and looking forward to it thrive for you guys. Now we should talk about the possibility of new music because you sort of hinted a little bit there before a few singles over the last little while, but when you're back firing again, does this stir up some inspiration or what are we thinking with new music terms? It's it's, if anything, it's just a timing issue and it's just a finding the time, hmm. you know, if no music comes out, it's only because we, we still can't find the time. To do Fair it. Enough. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's not, because we don't want to do it and you know you, you, there's the saying you should be able to make time for things that you really want to do and love but you know life is life and you know kind of the dynamics of it you know does what it does and all of a sudden you're moved and pulled and you're over this way and and all of a sudden there's a there's two floods in your area and then the whole world gets you know shut down because of covid <laughs> and yeah. you know you, then your your dog passes or you you know you've got a you know there's just a myriad of things so you know, I mean, I've got this is my studio, recording studio here, Key Sound Studios in Byron. So, yeah. uh, and I record bands, produce bands, and mix bands and things like that. And um, and this has been set up for a little while now. And um, I'm hoping it'll inspire the other guys as well. You know, we've got lots of bits and bobs of you know parts of music that need to be put together. Mm. Um, so it's just it's just all about the time. You know, we've got the We've got the tools at our at our disposal um, to to do it, um, which is great, you know, which is really really good. But it's just finding that time is really really challenging at the moment. So we're an independent band, obviously we're not getting funded by anyone to to kind of sit in a room like we did with sharing space or you know and and write for eight months and be yeah. able to pay for everything else that's got to be paid for. It's a very you know as you get a little a little bit more older um and if you haven't really reached that bigger benchmark where you know where you can fund it yourself you can go well you know let's just you know put some money into it take some time off from our other businesses and and sit and write um that just doesn't that's just not apparent or doesn't you know it's not in the it's not a factor so it's literally just you know when we we're, we're about to rehearse for this tour so when we rehearse a lot we always before we start, you know, rehearsing the songs, we um, we definitely just jam for you know, like half an hour or so, and it's all spontaneous and oh, cool. and it's we just kind of you know turn on the little iPhone recording things and and keep recording snippets. We've got hundreds and hundreds of things, you know. It's just um, yeah, trying to find the time. So you know, time will yeah. tell. <laughs> there you go the time we find will tell <laughs> yeah. now looking back over your career it can be very easy to say what can change over time but what's the one thing that's always remained the same about cog the the friendship i think is, is the main thing and also i know it's not one this is a little bit more of an add-on but 
it's it's the love of the people who like the music who mm. request for us to keep wanting to play and you know go out and play and and that's very humbling so i think that just given you know the nature of the the band you know the friendship that we have and love for each other that we have and then the the fan base that we have um the people who like the music um yeah that's been a, a, a consistent thing and something that's really as you get through the uh, the career and the, the you know what is it now 20 odd years or something hmm. i mean and we haven't really released an album since 2008 so that's quite a that's quite a long time ago and then so it, i just kind of scratched my head just kind of going wow like okay these songs really did kind of for once stand the test of time to some degree yep um yeah and and hopefully people are still showing up to the gigs and they are it seems like so yeah yeah they're, they're, they're constant things i'd say yeah I a like lot that. of laughter in the cog camp the laugh laughing factor is a big part of the band even though Good. you know the, the music can be somewhat kind of serious and have some kind of you know political narrative to it you know social political narrative to it within the band and when we're together there's it's just non-stop to some degree choking around excellent as it should be i think and, that's the best way to having, do it yeah and having right. and having fun my smile lines are because of the gowers because of the other two <laughs> nice <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> now what's on your list of things you'd love to do as a band you haven't yet had the chance to do Probably go overseas more, I think. Like when we yeah. went over to Europe and we played with Sleep Makes Waves and we did that, I think it was three weeks or two and a half week run, you know, that we did over in Europe. Mm. It was it went really fast. It was really, you know, quite full and potent. But I think we did like, you know, 17 shows or maybe 12 shows or something. But that was, that was fantastic. And that was something really different for us because we, you know, we've obviously toured Australia a lot. So yeah, I'd, I'd say definitely to tour overseas would be would be something that would be pretty cool. Okay. But it um mm -hmm. it just costs quite a bit of yeah quite a bit of dough. <laughs> bit of your money now because it's not uh, labels or anyone else's. So yeah. Now what I do with yeah, everyone. That, that's, right. that's right. What I do with everyone is I get them to look ahead to the future. So I want you to finish this sentence for me with a prediction. By the end of twenty twenty four, Cog will. Be writing a new album. See? Good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm setting the intention. Yes. It's on tape now. I haven't always I haven't always been right though with my intention oh. setting. All my okay. manifesting. I try hard. <laughs> All right. We'll check back in uh at the start of next year and we'll see how you can win that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You mean never know. Mate, thank you so much for your time, Lucius. That was great. I can't wait to get these albums on vinyl. It's gonna be phenomenal. Yeah, me too. It's, it's exciting. Eh? Um, it's triple two. I don't know if you know that, but it's a triple yeah. vinyl. Yeah. So yeah. it's a lot of playing. Like I told you, there's three songs. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right. <laughs> Mate, I'll hopefully see you in Sydney. It's going to be an amazing show, and we'll catch up then. Awesome, Troy. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Lucia. See you, mate. It. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.